One day, NASA will build a spaceship that can take us anywhere in the universe. Probably. And when this happens, we'll be able to find a new, beautiful home. Scientists even know what exactly they're looking for. We want a planet about twice the size of Earth with an average temperature of 77 degrees Fahrenheit, with a pretty dense atmosphere. Bigger planet means more room for water and potential homes. And a dense atmosphere means more protection from nasty space stuff, as well as more lush plants and cool animals. Thanks to the James Webb Space Telescope, we can now study exoplanets better from a distance. Of course, sending astronauts there would be much better, but oh well. Discovering new planets isn't easy, though. It's like trying to find a tiny firefly in a pitch-black forest. Scientists had to come up with a clever method to find very distant planets. It's called the transit method. Here's how it works. Scientists capture a series of snapshots of a distant star at different points in time. Then, they scrutinize these images. They try to find any mysterious dark spots passing in front of the star. If they find one, it could very well be a planet. These snapshots hold the keys to uncovering vital information about these distant worlds. Not only do they tell us that there's a planet there, but also reveal its size, radius, and how close it is to its parent star. And most excitingly, they hint at whether it could ever become a new home for us. And now their research is finally bearing fruit. Recently, we've stumbled upon a tiny world nestled in the Cygnus constellation. It's called Kepler-22b. At first glance, it might not seem like a big deal, but this discovery has some pretty huge implications. This planet is located right in the Goldilocks zone. The Goldilocks zone, also known as the habitable zone, is a sweet area around a star where the conditions are just right for a planet to have liquid water on its surface. It's not too hot, so it doesn't evaporate, and it's not too cold, so it doesn't freeze. Hence the name from the famous story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. So there might be water on Kepler-22b, and where there's water, there's a chance for life. And it's not just about life. Having a planet covered in oceans can be a game changer for climate stability. All because vast water bodies act like nature's thermostats. When the sun beats down on the hot parts, the water soaks up some of that heat and spreads it around like a blanket. The scorching regions cool down and the icy ones warm up and thaw out. Back in the bad old days of our Earth, the moon played a crucial role in helping water puddles spread across our planet. This is what helped our world transform from a fiery nightmare into the vibrant, life-packed orb we call home. Kepler-22b has about the same year length as our Earth. And if we're right about the whole ocean thing, scientists think its average temperature could be around a cozy 12 degrees Fahrenheit. But if this world also sports an Earth-like atmosphere, temperatures might soar up to a toasty 72 degrees. This world isn't too far away from us, only 635 light years, which is about 3 quadrillion miles. Yeah, that's pretty close in space terms. Its sun is a yellow dwarf star, just like our sun. Although, there's a subtle difference. It's about 20% dimmer, so you won't see this star in the night sky even if you squint your eyes really hard. This star also happens to be quite chilly. Its temperatures are hovering around a frigid 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, making it the Arctic of the starry skies. Luckily, Kepler-22b snuggles up to its star a bit more closely than we do to the sun. If it was in our solar system, it would find its place somewhere in between our familiar Earth and Venus. So the brightness and the temperature on this planet would be almost the same as on Earth. There are a couple of catches though. For example, this world might be quite a gymnast. It could be twirling around its star in a totally different way than Earth does. It might be tilted, like Uranus. If that's the case, the temperatures of the planet could be quite weird. You'll experience bone-chilling winters, followed by scorching hot summers. So let's hope this theory isn't true. If Kepler-22b has a normal tilt, its climate would be pretty similar to what we enjoy here on Earth. The next problem is gravity. 
Kepler 22b is about 2.4 Earth's size, which means the gravity there would be stronger. You'd feel noticeably heavier on this planet. It would be just like doing your everyday activities on Earth, but everything would require more effort due to the stronger gravitational pull. Simple things like climbing stairs or even just breathing would require much more energy. So it's time to build some muscles. People would have to adapt to the new conditions by having denser bones and more robust cardiovascular systems just to move around comfortably. Unfortunately, that means doing sports would be much harder too. But hey, at least people might need to consume more calories to sustain their activities. So even though you'd have to exercise more, you'll also be able to eat more delicious food. Buildings on Kepler-22b would likely be square and robust to withstand the stronger gravity, which would kind of be problematic because taller structures are super challenging and expensive to build. But the most important question is, what kind of planet is that at all? Yeah, it's the big question mark. Scientists aren't even sure that Kepler-22b is Earth-like. It could be a gas giant or even a water world. A water world is a planet with a vast ocean covering its surface. And it's not just some knee-level deep water. It'll be insanely huge. Thousands of miles deep and more, with no visible surface or any plants around for a long time. In that case, we could dream of building underwater cities. We could filter the water for sustenance and perhaps evolve into amphibious beings. Would that be a step backward or a leap forward in our evolution? Some scientists also lean towards the idea that Kepler-22b might be a mini-Neptune. This is a legit planetary category, by the way, but that theory is still unproven. But let's say, for our sake, it's a rocky planet. Even then, we're in the dark about its atmosphere. Does it even have one? What if it's like Venus, toxic enough to make your ex look like a bouquet of roses? In that case, we'd have to dig deep into the planet's depths for survival, figure out a heat source, and hope for the best. While there's a lot we don't know, let's keep our fingers crossed and assume the planet is Earth-like. In that case, what would Kepler-22 look like? Well, because of stronger gravity, the planet's landscape might be full of rugged mountains, deep valleys, and powerful rivers. If there's life on this planet, it's probably quite small? Unusual plant and animal life should have adapted to the higher gravity. Trees might be shorter and sturdier. They'd struggle to break free from the soil. Animals might be pretty small too. They would also have strong, muscular legs for support. Perhaps these creatures would have numerous legs making movement possible. They'd need to be small in stature but gargantuan in strength. Muscular giant spiders sound not so bad, right? As for our beloved pets, they'd have to become little muscle-bound spheres just to survive. Also, the landscapes would feel very spacious because of the planet's sizes. A three-day flight in a plane sounds like quite the adventure. There are many possibilities with Kepler-22b. So far, we don't have a clear answer. But let's hope that scientists will find it before we load the first people into shuttles and send them to conquer the planet. That would be awkward if it turns out to be a gas planet or something like that. 